Hi, my name is Nick Huntington Klein, uh, and this is going to be the first in a series of short videos about data visualization, or if you prefer, data communication. Uh, in these videos, I'm going to be talking about the theory behind data visualization and communication, some best practices and things like that. Uh, and then as we go on, we'll be getting into more technical details and talking about how to produce visualizations in Excel, uh, ggplot2 in R, and also Tableau. Uh, but for now, with this first video, all I'm going to do is talk about some, which is what is the point? What's the whole goal of data communication, data visualization? What are you doing here? Well, the idea here is that we are trying to take a result and we are trying to present that result that came from data in a way that makes sense to the audience. That is our goal, right? Uh, there's sort of a couple of steps that we can imagine going on here. Uh, first of all, what is it that people want to know? And that can come from your audience. And you know, if you're in a business context, then there's probably some sort of business question that people want to have answered. Uh, if you're in an academic context, there's going to be an academic question that people want answered. Uh, but in general, you know, there's some question that people want to know the answer to. Uh, given that question, you can perform a data analysis to try to figure out the answer to that question. Uh, but usually the data analysis is going to be a little bit too much information to provide back to people. So let's say, for example, someone asks you for directions. Uh, that's a question. Somebody wants to know the directions uh, to, the, to a restaurant that you think that's, that's in town somewhere. Okay, so what are you going to do? Well, you could hand them a hard drive filled with a complex, detailed map shape file that they can open up on their computer and use to triangulate the distances and figure out the roads that can lead them to the restaurant. That would be too much information, right? That's not actually what they want back. They don't want the full analysis that you would have to perform. They just want the answer. They just want you to know, oh yeah, it's down the street, two blocks on the left, right? So the idea here is that you don't want to provide them with the analysis. You want to provide them with a summary of the analysis uh, in such a way that's going to make them understand the answer. Uh, you know, sometimes less information is more. And the real key with data communication is figuring out exactly what information to provide uh, in order to get across what the answer to the question is. Uh, and in a non-misleading way that people will actually understand the answer once you get there. So the basic steps of data communication uh, is, first of all, to figure out what the question is. Uh, second of all, once you have the question, try to use data to analyze, to analyze data to try to figure out what the answer to that question is. Uh, making sure that you are actually trying to answer the question and not necessarily provide the answer that people want. Right? There's, those are two different things. Uh, you, know, you don't want to go hunting in data to try to confirm the thing that you already think you know. We'll get to that later. Uh, and then once you have your answer, you need to figure out how can I get this information about this analysis back to the audience in such a way that's going to be understandable and accurate? How can you make the viewer understand what the answer is and why that's the answer? All right? So that's going from them to you. They bring you the question. You do the analysis or somebody else does the analysis. Uh, and then your job as data communicator is to take that analysis and package it in such a way that it makes sense to an audience. So what are we going to do with our data? There's a couple of steps that we can imagine. And, and what we're going to be thinking about is how can we tell a story with this data? Audiences connect with stories. Uh, now, the problem with that is that data often does not tell a story, at least not on its own. And we can run into problems where we sort of force a story on data that's not really there and we end up misrepresenting our results. We have to be careful, but keeping in mind that at the end, we have to send back something that makes sense to people and people connect with stories. And so how can we fit into that without misrepresenting what the data actually says? Well, first we want to really understand the context of what's going on. All research questions, uh, whether they're business or academic, come up in, the co in a certain context. You need to understand what's going on in the broader world so that you know how to interpret data properly. Uh, so then uh, once you have the context and you have an analysis that hopefully pays attention to what that context is, uh, you want to choose an appropriate visual display, whether that's a table or a graph or an animation or a spreadsheet or a whole bunch of graphs altogether, whatever it is that you think is going to effectively get across the answer to that data. What story is your data telling? How can you get that story across in an accurate way to your audience? Uh, once we have our visual display, we want to make sure to eliminate Clutter. Uh, it's very easy to get distracted. Data is complex. And the whole reason we're doing this whole data communication thing is to eliminate clutter, right? What would be the easiest way of doing data communication? Well, we get the research question, we collect some data, and then we just give them the data, just the whole data set, and then let them do, figure it out themselves. But that, what's the point of that, right? They wouldn't, they probably wouldn't do it correctly. Uh, you know, in, if, if they're asking you, they probably aren't capable of doing the analysis themselves, uh, or they don't want to, or they're too busy. Uh, and it doesn't tell them anything, right? You've given them all the information, but that's just like handing them the hard drive with the map. Uh, you don't want to do that. 
so instead, you want to try to narrow down what you're presenting as much as possible. Eliminate all of the information that does not need to be there so that you can focus on getting across the result that people need to know about. Uh, so we eliminate all the clutter that we can. We focus the audience's attention wherever we want it to go. Uh, there are lots of ways to do that. And then we want to think like a designer. Uh, what do designers do? Designers try to design objects or materials or information in such a way that people know how to use it. Think about like a faucet, for example. If you walk up to your sink and there's a faucet there, you even if you've never seen that faucet before, if you go to a new place with a new kind of faucet, you can probably figure out how to turn on the water pretty easily. Right? That's because somebody designed that faucet in such a way that it would be intuitive, that people would walk up and the natural reaction that they would have, turning like this, unscrewing the knob, whatever it is, the natural reaction that they have leads them to the right answer. That's what you want. You want the analysis that you send to your audience, the natural reading that a regular person would have of that analysis that you provided them, you want them to get the idea that you want them to get. Right. You, you know, there's a lot of analyses that we can give to people and they interpret them correctly. And you see this all over the place. Read any sort of news article about a research study and how often those research studies are misinterpreted. Right. If you know the study and then you read the news article, it's pretty common that they'll be misinterpreted. Why is that? Because academic papers aren't written as though they're being written by designers. They're being written for a technical audience. The most natural way to read a research paper often leads you to the wrong conclusion. We don't want that. If we are going to be data communicators, we have to make sure that what we say and what the audience hears are the same thing. We need to be careful about that. And a good way to sort of wrap all this up is that we want to tell a story. Uh, we want to make sure that there's a story in the data that's getting across. It's going to make it a lot easier for people to understand. It's also going to make the results stick in people's heads a lot clearer. And that story doesn't necessarily need to be, I mean, we don't want it, we want it to be a true story for one thing. Uh, but it just needs to be straightforward. There needs to be people and there needs to be agency in there. Uh, and that's going to help get across what the result is, even if our story is just about, you know, an earnings report. How can you tell a story about the data in an earnings report? Turns out to be kind of an interesting topic. So that'll be what we're talking about in the rest of data communication or data visualization, if you prefer. Thank you.